Morning guys, how you all doing? All good I hope? It's Monday the 4th of March. It is quarter to six. It's minus one degrees. I was scraping the car this morning. It's just warmed up a bit now at zero. But I've just got down to Thorpe Green. I was just in the car. Uh, I haven't even got my gear out or anything yet. So plan for today is just a bit of uh, general fishing really. We'll uh, do a bit of feeder fishing. Uh, probably 12 metre pole. I know it's a good line here. A line for the roach. Probably 6-7 metre uh, whip. Uh, one gram, one and a half gram whip to hand. And as I say, uh, a line down the edge for perch and stuff. i probably use the bait dropper with that with a bit of dead maggot. Uh, casters and chop worm. This you right down the edge. And just try and fish for a bite. It's, it's going to be it's going to be hard, but uh, it was dry yesterday. It's supposed to be dry today. It's going to be very, water's going to be very cold, but uh, we'll give it a go. I'm going to go and get all my gear sorted out, get set up, and I'll get back to you in a minute. Well, now you're right. Well, guys, just got down here, just sort of sort of my box out. Um, I haven't set anything up yet. I'm just going to mix my ground bait like I always do. In an ear, I've got 50/50 brown and green breadcrumbs with a little bit of a pro natural in there. There's some very finely crushed coconut and some coriander. And what I did last night, I've riddled it through a maggot riddle and then I pushed it all the way through a flour mill or flour, just a you storm, uh, standard flour sieve. So it's really fine, I've got all the bits and pieces out. I didn't want any great big bits of coriander or flaked maize or any, any sort of particles in there. But what I've done last night as well, I've got some crushed hemp and uh, put it in the machine and crush it a lot finer. I've got three or four secret ingredients in there. Sorry about the noise. Fair bit of traffic here. I've got some oils in there, some flavourings. Pour boiling water on, lid on, in the microwave for three minutes, take it out, put it on the windowsill, let it cool, and then put it in the fridge overnight. And you just get this really thick, oily, really nice scent so I'm going to put that into the mix first to mix it because it's quite wet you want to add this last once you've um, you know if you added your water to it and got it right and then add this and over wet it so we'll get that in first give that a good mix around shouldn't really, I should probably give it a quick run for the mag, maggot riddle later on, but as I say, this, it's really, really fine. It's 
waste anything. And then in here I've got some CSL, some corn steep liqueur, some wheat hydrosylate, which is just like the enzyme from wheat, and a load of molasses. Really thick and sweet. We'll get that in there, give that a mix around. You can see all that oil on there. Just add this a little bit at a time. I'm probably gonna slightly over wet this a bit today. Yeah, I'm gonna slightly over wet this today. There's quite a lot of brown crumb in there. It will come back round again. But what I want, because the water's really cold, there's been a lot of ice cold flood water in. I want a bit more heavier inner ground bait today. Just to sit on the bottom, get straight to the bottom. Then we'll so I'm almost going to slightly over wet it, but I know leaving it half an hour it will dry up a little bit. That's perfect. Just going to slightly over wet that. But what I'll do is set up the pole now and the feeder and everything. Once I'm fully set, I'll come back to this. Just going to quickly run it through a riddle. If there's any crushed hemp, I should push the hemp back through. I want the hemp in there just for any roach and skimmers. But there shouldn't be a lot of particles at all. You want to get rid of any big sodden lumps. You don't want them in the peg. I'll quickly fill the fee up. Uh, fill the fish up. You don't want that. It's a little bit wet in the minute, but I know leaving that half an hour or so that's going to come round a bit. Right, let's get set up and I'll get back to you. Okay, bait, I've got a load of um, white squats. Got a few live pinkies there. I've got some dead red maggots, which, which I've got in a little bit of uh, water there, and I'll keep that in a bag airtight so they're not going to go black. I've got some casters in water so they're not going to start floating. Mixture of red, red, white, and some fluoro maggots. A load of worms, red worms and dendrobenas. I've got some corn in there, some more dead rab red maggots. That's just got my box a few bits and pieces in there, plummets, disgorges and e bits. This is my ground bait 
my initial ground bait which I'm going to put on the 12 meter line and in there I've just got the uh, squats dead pinkies a few dead maggots and a few casters and a couple of bits of corn I'm going to get that balled up I'll put about three balls in and I'll uh, start feeding the 12 meter line I'm just sprinkling a few maggots in and casters from a roach line sorry about the bright sunshine and literally I'm about a foot off the board in both sides on the top three I'm just going to sprinkle a few maggots and casters down the edge that's going to be my perch lines just drip feeding at the minute I'll come back to you in a minute once I've balled up and start balling in because I haven't put a cup on yet Okay guys, <clears throat> hope you can see me alright, that sun's absolutely blinding on the water, I've tried to position it as best I can. I'm all fully set up, I haven't baited anything yet. I've set my lines, I've got a perch line to my left and my right, which is basically top three, literally down the edge of the boarding. I'll swing you around in a minute and show where I'm fishing. I've got a roach line, top three as well, out in front of me, it's pushing right to left quite strong at the minute there's a lot of traffic here I apologise I'm on the main road I've got a 12 metre line set up on the pole on the deck that's one and a half grams and I've got a feeder line clipped to about two thirds of the way across I'll quickly show you the rigs if I can I'm trying to keep everything parallel to the bank here because you get a few walkers and that coming along with dogs and that I don't want to block the path up so again from a roach line I've got this little desk 0.4 gram that's just on a five solid elastic it's 0.10 uh, main line that's all the way down to a small bulk and number 10s stots and again all the way down to 0.8 hook length and uh, if you can see that size 20 gamma katsu black hook that's going to be the roach line But down the edge for the perch, <clears throat> I'm gonna. I've just sprinkled a few casters and dead maggots down there, but I will be bait droppering uh, some chop worm and casters down there in a little bit. With this one, I've got just the teal hollow on there, and that's the four by fourteens chop worm or wormer, I think it is. It's called. It's 0.12, it's quite heavy, <clears throat> 0.12 main line. That's running all the way down. The small bulk of number 10 shot there. We've got another number 10 shot. I've got quite a big, heavy, size 16 uh, Gamma Katsu pellet hook on there. I set about a float length over depth.
It might be easy to put my rigs down to the left, I think, looking at it today. And then my pole line, it's top four deep. I've left a lot of, uh, a good metre of line above the float because it's pushing quite hard. So that's on the top four. Again, that's on a teal elastic. It's 0.12 main line. I said there's quite a lot of drop on there, but it's flowing hard at the minute. That's a 1.5 gram trio, Drenum trio hook. It's running all the way down to 1.2 gram Olivet. There's a couple of number eight stocks underneath it there, just so I can bring down if I need to into play. I've got one number eight stock there and a size 18 Gamma Katsu wide gate maggot on there. That's going to be the, be the uh, roach line, uh, sorry, the uh, the main 12 meter line. I've just got a 30 gram cage feeder set up. I'm just using my Zebco Trophy light medium feeder. 3.3 meters. I've got a size 18 cameras and B520 on there. 2.6 pound hook length and a 30 gram cage feeder just free running in line and that's with uh, Shimano Sedona 4000 reel 8 pound braid on there okay made up three balls that ground bait didn't need any more water it was absolute bob on so uh, it's quite heavy I squeeze them as tight as I can. I'm not going to put any loose feed in. So I want all the bait to get down to the bottom. The river's pushing, I don't want to drift the fish off. Switch you around. I'm going to get three of them in on my 12 meter line. Then I'm going to start on my roach line. I'm going to have to, uh, just the way the peg is in that, double on ship. Yeah. I'm going to take my time. Probably going to have to go at an angle. got the uh, end of the pole on my elbow and we're just sort of lining it up with there's a post just where that boat is just where the white fender is I can see that ball I might just drift that one the next one to the right a little bit more that's pushing hard It's got to break it down at section six. Let's put it across my knee. 
because there's a road behind me and I'll be shipping my pole onto the road. One more. One thing I will be doing today is what I didn't do enough of down at Wormat was keep plumbing the depth. Still tidal here because I think at the end of that last video when I say you know it switched off and it's fishing hard looking back at the video and seeing all the water behind me th three four foot of water I think the fish was still there still feeding on the bottom it's just I was probably fishing above them and not put enough uh, depth on my rig Let's M3 him. I'm not going to start on the feeder. I will do it in a little bit. I'm just going to try for the roach on the roach line. See if we can get an early fish. In fact, no, what I'm going to do is I'm going to still keep feeding that roach line. I'm going to try on the uh, down the edge. See if we can get an early perch or something. Both rigs are the same, it's about a pole length, uh, float length, sort of half a float length over depth. If you just go out a little bit further, there's a bit of a sharp ledge, it's what'll be right down the edge of the perch. That water is ice, ice cold. I'm mixing the ground bait up this morning. It's got a double red maggot on to start with. I know it's cold, I can see my breath.
and let's try the other side well that sunlight's terrible today I've had nothing on the perch lines um, so I'm going to try the roach line I was going to put a few bait droppers down there but while there's no signs and it's quiet and it's still a couple of minutes to eight I'm not going to blast the bait in just yet I'll wait till this uh, if the, we ever do get a little bit of heat in the sun but you can see today it's ice cold and well wrapped up so I'll just try the roach line and uh, yeah we'll just feel our way into it I don't want to start putting some load of bait droppers down there and making the peg go a bit funny but I will do in like half an hour an hour's time if I'm not getting any response and then I'll probably go over on the 12 meter line just going to start off with a single red maggot I'm going to flick this over What I'm going to have to do is, because it's flowing quite a bit, I've only got a short line from the float to the tip. I'm just going to put the top four on, or section four on, just so I can run it through a little bit. Move that feeder out of the way for the minute. We don't need that. There's a bite, there's a bite. We missed it. All right, let's move this feeder. Let's get my section four. I'm literally going to keep the same line. I'm just going to drop that straight in in front of me. Just let the bolt go down. At least I can follow it a little bit more. Just hold them with section three in a minute because I want to make sure I'm on the right line. If I just dip my pole under the water, I can hold it back. Slow it down. Straight away I've just you know notice there's a bit of a natural crease. If I go out and have a four inches or so, six inches, it flows a lot more. So if I can get on the end of that crease. That's a little bit too slow there.
That's where I want it, just there. Seeing them maggots and casters, it's nicely trickling down, not flowing too much. That section four is now just allowed me to run the float through the peg a little bit more. Just flick it out and letting the bulk take the float, hold it on a tight line. So I know that's where I plumbed up on the section three. I know I'm on fishing in the right place, I'm not going too far. I think we'll do if there's nothing coming in on this uh oh hang on hang on that dipped And a little inquiry there. I was going to say, if we didn't get nothing on that run through, we'll go out on the 12 metre line and just try. Is anything settled out there already? But if not, Oh, there's some bubbles coming up there, look, right near my float. I think what I'm going to do today is I'm going to dot that float right down to the flush to the surface. Got two little dinks taking it down to half the bristle, but... Just try slightly further out. I'm 
going to do is hold that pole tip under the water so I can hold it back a little bit more. I can even hold it steady if I wanted to. You can see there's a lot more flow there. Just holding that back against the flow and I think there's a little bite there again you see just holding it stationary they might not want to be chasing it around they might want it held back hard They want it held back hard or almost stationary I'll probably put a lot heavier float on change the rig put a gram, gram and a half or 1.2 gram float on just so I can hold it back a little bit harder just so the float's not sat at an unnatural angle sat at a little bit about 45 degrees at the minute Okay, it's half past eight. About half a dozen or so run through on the 12 meter line, but it's absolutely tanking through at the minute. It's flowing too hard. I probably, you know, I need, sorry, I probably need to step up to two to three grams, uh, or, or I reckon three grams. But with the water being so cold, I don't think you're gonna be chasing the bait around today. So I've just gone on the feeder, just literally the first cast out. I'm going to get that crud off the line because there is a lot of junk coming through and I don't want that building up on the line. I'm using eight pound um, braid but I have got a eight pound mono shock leader on here or oh, might be I think it's ten pound die with sensor clear just allows that little bit of stretch it's any abrasion mono is so much better than braid But say I've stepped it up to about 45 grams, I clipped on some more lead. Well, I put a bigger, heavier feeder on and I clipped on a little strip of lead as well. Just so that's holding. It's, it's half past nine now. So I'll give this five or six, probably about six, seven minutes. If there's nothing on here, I'll say I'll bring it in. And try the 12 metre line. But I'm going to be brave, I'm going to start catapulting a few casters over the top now. To the right. Because they're going to take a little while to get to the bottom. Just two little pouch folds of a that's fine, I'm not going to go over doing it.
just trickling them maggots in on the three metre roach line. I haven't tried that for a while. I might just try that before going out on the 12 metre line. Been out nearly four to five minutes, so I'll bring it in in a minute. Recast, put a little bit of bait in. That first one, I only half filled it with my starting mix with the dead uh, pinkies, squats and casters and that. And then the rest was just plain, bra uh, plain ground bait because I don't want to put too much bait in initially at the start. If it's, you know, it has been a slow start, very slow start. So we'll bring this in. I've just got a double red maggot on. sort of two-thirds fill in the feeder with my initial mix and then I just plug in each end with plain ground bait it's got a double red maggot on A lot of debris coming down at the minute. It's going to sink the tip, sink the line. Gently tightening up. I don't want too much of a bend on it. Slightest bend. That'll do. I might just put another 10 gram on there. Step it up to 40 gram. I'm still drip feeding the other lines.
And what I thought I'd do is in a minute, the perch line to my right, I'll bait dropper that, just one bait dropper with some chopped worm and casters, and a few dead red, uh, dead red maggots. But not the left line, I want to just gauge the response between the two. But it's a beautiful day, wow. That sun's actually quite warm. It's not a breath of wind, it's dry. Just need a few bites, that'd be nice. <laughs> But this time last year, it was fished its head off down here. That's early doors, it's 29. And what I think I'll do is, you know, if I sort of 10-15 minutes, put another ball of ground bait in on the uh, 12 metre line but mainly ground bait, just a few squats and dead pinkies in there, nothing else maybe a few casters but get the scent in the water, get the ground bait in the water but minimal feed Fishy's gone. I think that's the uh One of the worst case scenarios in it, mate. Right, it's blue skies, clear. Get it out warm. It's an ice cold night, minus one this morning, minus two, scraping the car. Probably one of the worst conditions you can have. Uh, Even so, I'd at least expect a couple of bites. We really might come on about midday when it warms up a bit. Might switch on. Uh, not to even have a proper proper bite as such there's a couple of small dips earlier on on the uh, three meter road, roach line but all that was just tripping the bottom when it's flowing too hard so the maggots weren't touched or smashed or anything so I'm not Fish top, I haven't seen any fish jump. I don't want I'm starving. Oh. I've got a few of them. Might be time for a sarnie. No, sarnie? I haven't got any sarnie. Cut the teeth. Good 
Okay, nothing on the tip. Not tap. No, not. A touch. And we'll quickly try the uh, roach line. these warpers if they want to get by. The dogs. Let's move the pole. Try a white maggot. See what the flow's like. If it's eased down a bit. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put another shot on, another 10. Okay. Try double pink.
Number number ten on there. That while it's this hard, I'm just going to start with a single pinky. You can get through if you want. Shots are taken up now. Okay, it's ten past nine. It's still very quiet. I just stepped up the feed on my roach line just a little bit and I've refed my 12 meter line mainly ground bait but with uh, more squats through it and some dead pinkies just recast it out again on the feeder I'm staying on the feeder at the minute I just put a little bit of head of a chop worm on there and a pinky and I've stepped it up to about 45 grams because it's flowing quite hard just see if it holds a bit better but what I am going to do on my right hand side perch line I'm just going to put a one bait dropper in mainly casters and some dead red maggots put some worms in later on let's got some deads dead reds I'm just gonna fill that nicely I'm gonna just drop that down to my right and just gauge the response if, if, if there is a response 
I'm still, as I say, keep feeding the left hand one just by hand, just strip feeding in and just gauge the difference between the two. That's just going to hang like that. And as soon as that hits the bottom, the door opens. There you go, that's nicely opened up. The bait's down there. Where have all the fishes gone? case scenarios in it right it's blue skies clear get out warm it's an ice cold night minus one this morning minus two scraping the car probably one of the worst conditions you can uh, you want. even so I'd at least expect a couple of bites Come on, about midday when it warms up a bit. Might switch on. But uh, not to even have a proper proper bite as such. There's a couple of small dips earlier on on the uh, three metre rope roach line, but. Well, that was just chipping the bottom when it's flowing too hard. So, the maggots weren't touched, they smashed through the middle of the evening, so. Well, I haven't seen any fish top, I haven't seen any fish jump. Few of them. Okay, 25 past nine. I've shared a quick go on both perch lines and nothing. I'll give it a sort of five minutes. But I'm gonna have another cast on the feeder. I've just put just plain uh, ground bait in there this time. Still got the worm and a pinky on. I'm gonna give it five ten minutes on that. And then I'm gonna try the uh, 12 meter line i'm just have to keep switching around today what I probably might do if the flow is starting to ease up a bit i replumb the 12 meter line check the depth and have a few runs through on that and if, if it's starting to steady up a bit i'll probably start catapulting a few casters over the top just just trying not a lot just half a dozen at a time and see if i could trigger something into happening
Okay, just been having a think there. It's quite clear there, and then there's a bit of patchy weed, clumpy weed, and then it's runs free again, but still running hard, and this, this float's really not up to the job today. I mean, I can go back on the feeder, but I don't think there's going to be much occurring there. So, I want a sort of slow or static bait, so I'm going to take this off. I'm just going to mark the line with some tipex now, or where the pole is. So I can get the depth straight away. I'm going to put on a flat float, or a lollipop, or whatever you want to call it. Lay a fair bit of line on the bottom so I can hold it still. Just uh, hold the pole still. See if we can't buy a bike that way. Okay, well, we're up to four, it's three gram rig. So double the rig. And just mark the pole. With some whiteboard chalk marker. So census three gram rig. A big two and a half gram all of that. And a double bulk of three or four number eight stocks there. And get this cast out. See if this is any better. <sighs> if not, I'm a bit of a loss. There's what to do, I might just dolly a put a small bob on. Oh, I've got a bike now. And dolly it over this pole line. But instantaneously, instantly, it's just travelling so much better. I can pretty much hold that still if I wanted to. Cast out on a tight line, let it come round. Where's this wind bloody come from? You know, I was just going to try holding that there. It's a nice clear bit. There's no weed there. I had a look through my lollipop or flat floats and uh, they're a mess. <laughs> I don't know when the last time I used them. I got either a six gram one or one one and a half gram rigs but the ones that i want to use two three and four grams they're all trashed so that's the job for when i get back
So it's going to try ever so slightly inching it through. Just putting that on is 100% better than the other float. I'm in total control now. And what's going on and how I can run it through before the other float is so too light, one and a half grams. Can't remember who said it, Billy Lane or Ivan Marks or You gotta let the float boss the peg. Not the river boss to float. Basically, what it means is you know, have a rig that's heavy enough and stable enough so you can control it and present your bait, run it through, and all that. Rather than before, the flow was dictating. You know, just pushing the float through too fast. It was laying them 45 degrees, unnatural. It's getting dragged out of position. Couldn't hold it back. Well, what I'm going to do, I'm going to feed again on this line. And then what I'm going to do is just going to put a bomb on and dolly it over the top. Because it is very, very, very hard today. I don't know why it's so hard, but it is. Okay, I'm going to feed.
we put a fair ball of ground bait in since it is half ten it's probably about 45 minutes since the last fed um, really tightly compacting it the old school Oh, how's it going, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah not bad, thanks. Very good. Nah, it's bloody quiet today. Very, very quiet. I don't know what, understand what's going on. Not even had a bite. Really? Yeah. I'm not going to buy something out on a roach or. Yeah. Not even. Yeah, tried 12 meters, tried the feeder. Got a couple of perch lines down the edge, a little 4 meter line. Yeah. I came this time last year and it fished brilliant yeah. for the bream and that skimmers. But uh, I know it was frosty this morning, I was scraping the car, but yeah. I, I didn't expect it to be this hard. No, you think you'd get through the winter, wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. You normally buy a roach or two at least, but. Uh, Seen any fish topping or no, no, not a thing. Seen nothing. Yeah. I went to Ludham, sad. You've never had a bite. I went to Womack last last week and it, it fished really, really well. What actually in the in the stave? Yeah, where it's stave. Yeah, fished really well for roach, rudd, skimmers, and that. No bream, but just uh, yeah. you know, six, eight ounces that. Yeah, but nice. what, on the pole? Yeah. yeah, yeah, all on pole. But I did flood hard. It came right over the board and about three or four me, uh, foot behind me. Yeah. Uh, oh, well, all the boats. Yeah. <laughs> okay, just fed that 12 meter line. So, what I've done is, put a single lead mag on. I've got a one ounce top flattened pair lead. And just going to dolly it. Dolly it over the top of the pole line.
well, it's coming up to 12 o'clock. I'm back on the feeder, just dollying it over my 12 metre line. I'm really scratching my head at what to do because I've tried everything. Two thirds of the way across on the feeder where I was clipped up, nothing. 12 metre pole line, nothing. Roach lines, nothing. Down the edge for perch, nothing. Not a nibble, not a missed bite, no suck maggots. No signs, no nothing, no sign of any fish topping. It's just dead. Really strange. Really, really strange. It's like the river's just devoid of fish, but something's made them switch off. Hey guys, nearly two o'clock. We're all packed up and back at the car. I'm absolutely sweating. <clears throat> It's about 14, 15 degrees today, it's ridiculous. Come out of the house this morning, minus two. Freezing cold, thick, thick frost. Not a bite, not a bite all day long. Really bizarre. An old guy came down, I was talking to him for half an hour, and another guy to the left. They've not had a single touch, not a single bite all day long. I tried my perch lines down the edge, to the right with chopped worm and caster, a few dead maggots. The other one just sprinkling a few over the top. Kept sprinkling a few uh, maggots and casters on the roach line all day long. Odd, odd, literally tiny little nugget of ground bait from time to time, nothing. 12 meter line, tried that, nothing. Feeder, nothing. Um, I just don't know, strange, strange. I mean, it, normally I can buy a bite from something. Uh, even if it's a small roach or gudgeon or something, I can normally get a bite. I mean, I've tried pinky, single pinky. The tiniest bit of worm. Uh, in the end, what I ended up doing was I chatted to the guy for half an hour, came back, I had a bit of ground bait left, a working mix, so I made up three or four balls of ground bait, chucked it in over a 12 metre line, and I just dollied it over till I ran out of bait. But uh, not a touch, not a sniff. So it's just, it's just an odd one today. Whether it's just too extreme into weather temperatures, bright blue sky, uh, whether it's a combination of a lots of things, probably a lot of. I mean, the guy, the old guy I was just talking to. His son came down as well to chat to him, and his son came down here about a week, two weeks ago, and bagged up on bream. Um, but the river seems to have shut down today. But yeah, we tried and tried and tried. Uh, that's all you can do. Yeah, you're not going to catch fish sat at home. So. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope there's something there. I might be able to put a bit video together. Um, the first DNW on the river for roach fishing this season. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I'm going to go home and assess things, try to work things out. I mean, I kept busy all day long, plumbing up and using the uh, pole cup and feeding accurately and Tried cutting down the feed with just ground bait. Um, just nothing bought a bite today, nothing. You know, dead maggot, I've tried dead maggot, dead single maggot, live maggots, dead pinkies, live pinkies, worms, caster, not a sniff. But that's the way it goes, that's fishing I suppose. But anyway, take care, tight lines, and I'll see you again in another video. All the best guys.